See if we can turn back the clock, you know, <laughs> and see uh, if that's, we can pick up some old feeling. For the first time in more than 40 years, the legendary producers Holland Dozier Holland have gathered to revisit their original Motown session recordings. That's Brian doing a count off there. They shed light on their creative process using the Supremes track, You Keep Me Hanging On. Oh, yeah. You know, when I, when, when I listen to this, I think, I, I, I think about uh, Walter Winchell. Oh, yeah, Walter, oh, yeah, right. You know, you know. It's time, America. Time for Walter Winchell. And, and we wonder if, if that would work with guitars. I think we had four guitars. Then. Yeah, four guitars. Yeah. And uh, and then we went in there in the studio and made that happen with the. You keep me hanging on. Hit number one in 1966. One of dozens of top ten hits for Holland Dozier Holland. But those were a great idea because we didn't have synthesizers there, so. We had to be really on our toes and coming up with innovative stuff. Music is always around you in your life. And you started picking up on sounds and things, and cars and trucks and what have you, you know. We were like a factory within a factory. You know, uh, uh, Smokey had his way of doing things. Uh, Norman Whitfield had his way of doing things. Everybody liked to keep their secrets to themselves. It was a friendly competition going on, but at the same time, the the early bird gets the worm. There's nothing out there that uh, emulates the Holland Dozier Holland sound to me. Uh, Brian and Lamont, they basically did the melody lines. That was their thing, okay? You know, Brian is unique in the chord structures that he used. I mean, and Lamont, he had a very unique way of doing melody lines, very unique way of rhythm. syncopating rhythms. That was uh, that that's that is still unique today. Mm -hmm. You know, they went for the sound. Yeah, mm -hmm. what does it sound like? Mm -hmm. Not how technically mm -hmm. this chord is constructed. What yeah. sound does it give you? One thing I learned from Lamont though um, is that uh, the bass line mm. has a whole lot to do with that. You know what I mean? Uh, it was just my feel, I guess, right, right, right. that I had right. for the the left hand. My right, left right, hand. Right. I couldn't play a lot with my right yeah. hand, <laughs> but my left hand. <laughs> but my left hand, stuff like that. Uh -huh. I would just. It was like drum sounds to me, you know. And then I would play with my left hand. And then I would pass it on to Jameson. He was really a great bass player. Probably the best I've ever heard. Yeah, he did. He had a great feeling for the yeah. tracks, you know what I mean? The beauty of what we had, or what we have when we work together, is so it's a real, real uh, a teamwork niche, you know? Mm -hmm. People do what their specialties are. The vocal idea or melody would come later after Brian and I had completed the tracks. Speaking of vocals, Set me free, why that was the hard you, part. Get out my life, why don't you, baby? Cause you don't really love me. You just keep me hanging on. And that was his job to teach the, the lead you singer. Don't really me, but you keep me hanging on. I would just spend time teaching to teaching the, the, the song and making sure the nuances were there. They didn't have to sing it exactly the way I was doing it, as long as they captured the feeling. This, this particular one, I came up with the, with the idea because I was just sitting here reminiscing, you know, you should have more tissue around here. A, 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 very, a very close person, a female that was very, very close to me, said those lines to me. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't really love me, just keep me hanging on, you know. Mm -hmm. I was good at that, though, but, but that's another point. <laughs> that's another yeah, point. you have to know we were choir boys, and that's why we were able to write such sensitive music. You know? <laughs> By the time they left Motown in 1968, Holland Dozier Holland had tallied nearly 40 top 40 hits on Billboard's pop chart, including 10 number ones for the Supremes alone. 
The team parted ways in the 1970s, but today the three have linked back up for a one-time reunion project, writing music for an upcoming Broadway production of The First Wives Club. It's been phenomenal, and the ride is still going. And I'm hobbling along. It's like being on a, a wild bronco, but I'm staying on top of it. <laughs> So when they take our pictures, doing the, right, listen right, to the track, right. then we'll go out and we'll bring the real guys in there that did it. <laughs> 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 no, no, that's <laughs>